In brightest day, in blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might beware my power, Green Lantern's light! Hey guys, Dancing Fool, aka Randy Cavanaugh from the Armored Garage here. Uh, so I make these Green Lantern rings from time to time, and I thought it might be interesting to kind of go over my process on uh, creating them, uh, printing them, and finishing them. Uh, for any of you guys that are doing 3D printing at home, uh, you might find it useful to uh, follow along to help with the finishing of your projects. Okay, uh, let's start from the beginning, which is uh, inside 3D Studio Max, where I have the ring modeled. So let's take a look there. So I created this model a few years ago as the first item for my Etsy store. Um, so you can see that I have all the different ring sizes laid out for quick export. Uh, so every time I create a ring that I don't have a size for, I just kind of move it into place so that the next time I have to print a ring of that size, I can just quickly export it and it's ready to go. Um, I also have symbols modeled for most of the different corps. So yeah, I can do all sorts of different colors of the rings. So the next thing I do is take this model, export it out, and send it out to the printer. So let's take a look at the ring printing out on the 3D printer. So this is what the rings look like when they're straight out of the printer you can see that the the symbol is is printed separately that's this little okay right here you can pick that up the reason for um, printing out the symbol separately is that I wind up with a cleaner outline um, if I were to, to print it uh, as a part of the ring, you'd wind up with uh, layer lines and um, it'd be a lot harder to get a, a nice clean outline for the ring. So the first thing I'm going to do is sand the outside of the symbols. Um, so that they can fit them into place a little easier. If it's too snug of a fit, then it's really hard to adjust the rotation of the symbol when I'm, I'm placing it inside the ring. So I just take a little sandpaper and kind of sand that down. I just try it, see how it fits. So there we go, that's a pretty good fit. Enough that I can still kind of adjust that in there so that I can get it exactly where I want it when I glue it in place. Uh, smaller one was a little tighter so I'll get that one. is perfect. Now I'll just put a little dab of glue on the back of the symbol. Uh, you really don't need very much. The stuff sets really fast so you don't have much work time. Um, it's a uh, crazy glue gel. It's my favorite kind of glue to use when I'm working with 3D prints. I 
I try to get the symbol um, as close to the right orientation as I can, and then just make a small adjustment before the glue sets. There we go. Pretty happy with uh, both of those. Came out quite nice. So the next step is to try and clean up uh, some of the lines that the printer leaves. Uh, probably can't pick this up because they're quite small, but um, essentially the way the printer works is it builds up each layer of plastic uh, one line at a time. Um, so we want to try and sand this to get rid of that. Goes to show you that even something as small as a ring uh, it still takes a lot of work to get it to a finished product. Um, really, with 3D printing, it's it's not as simple as just you know hitting a button and you get a finished product. A lot of work goes into to making these these getting these final results. Okay, so that's about enough for the first round of sanding. Now we can move on to the next step. So, once it starts to feel smooth enough, what I like to do is take some wood filler and mix it with a little bit of water uh, just to thin it out. And then I just work it into the ring to fill any remaining gaps. Keep the uh, to keep the symbol clean. Uh, what I like to do is um, just use a tiny little flathead screwdriver, and I just use it to remove any excess filler. Alrighty, you can see that the wood filler is filling in uh, some of the gaps that were in the top of the ring there. Um, yeah, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't take long. And again, you, you don't really need to use a lot of the wood filler, you just need a little bit to just kind of fill any of those remaining gaps. Um, especially in the sides here, uh, where the supports were. So 
So yeah, I just kind of keep working it until I sculpt something that I'm I'm happy with. There's definitely a bit of an art to it. It's something that you just kind of build up over time. Once you've done a few of these, you start to know what you what you're looking for. Okay, that should be pretty good uh, for the first round. So now we're just going to have to leave this uh, to set for 24 hours, and then we'll come back and take a look at what the next step is. Okay, so I think that's where we'll leave it for part one. Uh, next time we'll go over the priming and finishing process for the rings. Uh, so if you like the video, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you want to check out some of my other projects, hit me up on my Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash the Thanks for watching!